Hey everyone, I'm back with another wrist-free, hands-free flow for you. If you've got a wrist injury at the moment, this one's for you. We're going to be working side to side on the mat. So I recommend placing your mat horizontally with your device in front of you so it's easy to see what we're doing. We're going to start standing up. So as you come to your feet, come right into the center of your mat today and bring the feet about hip distance apart. And stand tall and let your palms turn forward slightly with that feeling of the collarbones really broad and wide. Start to take deep inhales through the nose and out through the nose. Hmm. And settling into your feet, into the ground, and from here, we're going to slowly take the arms up as you breathe in. Then begin to drop the left arm as you breathe out, lean to the side. We're going to switch. Inhale back to center and exhale to the other side. Start to make this really fluid. Arms flowing like water or maybe a little bit like seaweed or soft elbows. Calm, deep breaths, opening the side of the body. This time from here, start to take the arms out wide like wings. Let the fingertips gently drip down. Could you begin to shift weight into the left foot and the right knee comes up? From here, lower down and switch sides. This is crane, it comes from Tai Chi and Qigong. We're going to start to build a little bit of heat. Just going side to side for now. One more time. And now come back to center. From here, step your right foot out and come into warrior two. Turn your back heel out. Reverse breath in. And then as you breathe out, offer both hands forwards, really lengthen through the arms. And let's reverse, breath in. As you breathe out, check your right knee is above your right ankle. And back. And again, right knee above right ankle, press into your left heel so that back leg is strong. And now this time, reach the arms forwards. Imagine you're holding the sun in the palms. Bend your back knee slightly and imagine you could carry the sun across the mat. Pivot on your feet and find warrior two on the second side. Again, front knee above front ankle. As you breathe in reverse, palm lifting. As you breathe out, offer the arms forwards. Continuing. The kind of seaweed wakami arms. <laughs> Very fluid. Keep that back heel pressing down, strong legs. And now this time, both arms coming forwards, hold. Imagine you could pick up the sun in your palms and now carry the sun all the way back round to the first side, warrior two. This time reversing, lengthen the front leg and triangle as you breathe in, reach that right arm forwards and then down, hover the fingertips. So they're not really resting on anything. Top arm lifting up, arms spreading wide. Keep both legs quite straight and really lengthen through the spine. One more breath here. From here, come back to center. This time, straighten your front leg, switch the feet around. So the left foot turns out now, back toes turn in and warrior two on the second side. Reverse, straighten the front leg, and then triangle, reach forwards. In this practice, we're going to slowly build, bit by bit, getting warmer, building a little strength. Spread your arms wide, and press into the back heel. One more breath. And now come center, reversing. And then once again, 
turning to the other side. We're going to build now. Reverse, breath in. Once again, triangle, just one movement here. Glide back out of triangle, reverse warrior. Offer both arms forwards, go long. Now option to breathe here, or option to shift the weight into that front foot and open out, half moon, hands off the floor. Get a moment air time, expand, lift, reach. And then return the back foot down, carry the sun across the mat. Warrior two, second side. Again, check in with your front knee, back toes turn in. From here, reversing, front leg lengthen. Triangle. Take a moment, expand and return. Palm like an offering. And then gliding, arms forwards, maybe holding here or maybe finding half moon. Left hand floating. Wobble with me. And then return the foot, carry the sun across the mat to the first side. From here, turn both feet straight ahead of you. Press into the outside edges of the feet and gently fold down, fingertips resting either on a brick or the floor, just the fingertips, no weight in them. If you've got lots of space, you can even walk the fingertips back, shoulders back, elbows in. And settle the breath. Lengthening the legs as you lift the hips up. Slowly come to rise now. Take the arms overhead, join the hands in prayer, and bring the prayer down to the heart. Listen closely, turn your heels in. Bend your knees, send them out over the ankles. Just check that your knees aren't doing this. Send them right out over your ankles, and keep the chest lifted. Option to breathe here, or to take the hands above the head for goddess pose. Or if you're feeling a little bit jazzy, lift the heels, come onto the ball of the foot. It's easy to back bend here, so keep your low ribs in, hips low, three more breaths, two, and one. Return the heels, open the arms out. Wiggle the feet back into the center of your mat. Mountain pose. Oh, inhale, arms lift. Same as how we started, leaning over to the side. And to the other side. And one more time for good luck. How watery could the arms feel, how fluid. And then coming back into center, arms open out. Shift weight into one foot, lift the other knee. Return, shift. One more time each side. This time, step the right foot out once again. Find a warrior two. Same as before, reversing. Triangle, building on the same sequence. Coming back into reverse warrior. Once again, half moon, hands free. And if you're feeling really adventurous, maybe even lifting the right heel off the floor, balancing on the ball of the foot, and then return, carry the light of the sun across the mat, warrior two. Long breath in as you reverse, triangle. Flowing straight back out, reverse. And from here, half moon, gliding up. <laughs> and then again, maybe, maybe lifting the heel off the floor. I'm cheating, I've got my head on the wall. If you can do that, it helps. <laughs> and then return the foot, travel across your mat. Warrior two. Once again, turn both feet to face forwards. This time, gently take your arms behind the back. And rather than catching the wrists or linking the fingers, I'm just gonna rest my palms against my lower back. Breathe in, lift the, le uh, lift the chest, <laughs> straighten the legs. Breathe out, fold with the arms 
just resting behind the back. If it feels okay, you could catch the wrists or forearms, but there's no need to really roll the shoulder blades back. From here, release your fingertips down to the ground, and then come up halfway. And now with me, start to shift the weight into that right foot, bend the knee, fingertips barely touching, and then go to the other side. And then go to the other side. Can you float the hands? Maybe even offer the hands forwards. See if you go a little bit lower. You could get really low, but you don't have to. And shift. Coming right up in between each time now. Lower down, Skandasana. Last one, all the way over. And then back to center, release the hands. Step the feet in, mountain pose. Take a couple breaths here to center. So our last time through this sequence, once again, lift the arms, flowing, either like seaweed in the current or like reeds on a riverbank. That length in the side of the waist, and now from here, shifting, lift the leg. Replace crane form like the bird that flies huge distances. Very graceful, but very strong. Next time you lift the right leg, step it out, find a warrior two. Reversing, front leg lengthens. Triangle. Reversing, front knee bends, half moon, gliding up. Maybe you keep the heel down, maybe you lift the heel up. And just before you lose it, lower the back foot down. Nice and low through the hips, get really kind of sumo style. Warrior two, reversing, and triangle. Keep the back leg really strong. Reach the chest forwards and then reverse. For the last time, half moon. Glide the back foot up. Maybe lift the left heel, maybe not. And then low and slow through the hip. Warrior two. And feet face forwards again. For the last time, folding forwards. This time, either fingertips to the floor, or if it feels good, gently resting the hands on the feet or holding the ankles. Draw your shoulders back away from your ears. And think about lifting the sitting bones, your tailbone, your bum up. And that stretch in the back of the leg. One more breath. Walk your fingertips forwards. Lift up halfway. Once again, start to bend the right knee. You might just come down a little way. You might come down a lot. If you're really low, start to turn the left foot towards the ceiling. Arms off of forwards and now switch sides. Again, maybe you're here, maybe here, or maybe here. One more time, each side. Come up through the center. Strong hips. And then coming back, once again, take your arms out, turn your heels in. For the last time, goddess pose. Either palms at the heart or overhead. Maybe the heels up, maybe the heels down. Keep sending your knees out above your ankles. Feel those glutes, <laughs> nearly there. And then release. Come to stand, wiggle your feet in, shoulder width apart. Just for a moment, let your knees be quite bouncy, quite soft. Turn the palms out and slowly lift the hands overhead. Like you could, I don't know, gather, gather anything which is holding you back. I don't know, junk you don't need. 
and then use your hands. Imagine you could clear that out of your way. And getting rid of what you don't need, other people's opinions, <laughs> judgments, our own self-criticism. It's the hardest, right? We're our worst critic. <laughs> Do that one more time. Gather anything that you'd like to let go of. And as you exhale, <sighs> clear. Your arms come beside the body. Bring your feet about hip distance apart. Turn the toes out slightly, offer the arms forwards, and then lifting the heels, let's begin to lower down, a little slower than you'd like. Slow, send your hips back. Keep the arms light. It's much easier than goddess pose, come on. <laughs> and then come all the way down into a little squat. If it's easy to bring your heels to the floor, why not go for it? But again, it's not essential. Bring your fingertips together just to rest in front of the heart. Wrists nice and free here. For a moment, roll the shoulders back and down and then lift the chest. I've got my knees quite wide here. And now, option one, breathing here. Or option two, take your fingertips very gently to the floor in front of you. And you could even start to delicately take the fingers forwards and fold between the legs. If your heels are down on the floor, you could go a little bit further even, so you really start to stretch out through the back. There's two more breaths. And then from here, going back in, lift the heels. Take your arms out, this is challenging. And a bit like a penguin, can you wiggle, waddle your feet closer together? <laughs> then we're gonna turn to the side. It's not easy, right? <laughs> and then slowly find a way to uh, sit down. Straighten your legs out in front of you. And just for a moment, sitting nice and tall. If you need to bend your knees so you can sit tall, it's totally fine. Find what works for you. I'm gonna very gently walk my hands down my legs. On an inhale, lift the chest, lengthen the back. And on a breath out, gently fold down. Don't get fixated on getting low. And don't get too preoccupied with catching the feet or the toes. Keep this quite gentle. You might even let your back round a little bit. Often we think we always have to have a flat back when we fold. It depends what we're trying to do. Here, just releasing the muscles either side of the spine, just letting the back round slightly, but keeping the toes spread. Now, if you'd like to take this with more of a classic flat back, inhale, lift your chest, and think about taking the rib cage, the lower ribs, over your knees. It's not going to happen, but imagine. Imagine you could take your lower ribs over your knees so you get really, really long in the front and then fold down. And your hands are very gently resting. If you can catch the toes or the feet, go for it. But I'm not pulling myself down. I'm actually using a little bit of core strength to help me in the fold. There's two or three more breaths here. and then gently coming out. From here, bring the legs together. And could you bend the left knee and place the foot on the floor to the inside of the right leg somewhere? It doesn't have to be super close if that means you collapse backwards. And take the foot a bit further forwards. From here, sit tall and bring your right arm around the knee and gently hold the arm as you turn. Lift your chest. Start to look over the left shoulder. Sometimes that front foot kind of collapses out. 
we forget about it. So just have a sneaky peek, foot flexed, toes pointing, pointing to the sky. And now from here, coming back. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take my hands forward. This is a bit tricky, this one. Reach the palms up, lift the chest, and I'm gonna lean back. And I might hold here, <clears throat> or I might begin to straighten my leg and float the foot for five. <coughs> Excuse me. For four. <laughs> and three. Lift out of your lower back, two. One, lower the leg down. Slide your right foot in this time, foot comes down. Again, sitting tall, left arm comes around. As you breathe in, sit tall and turn, looking over the right shoulder. Again, sneak peek of the left foot. Yep, still flex, still in place, great. And slowly unwind. Again, reach the arms forward, sit tall. Lean back a little. An option to breathe here or to lengthen the right leg this time, point the foot and hold for five. For four. For three, lifting up. For two. And one, lower down. Slowly wiggle your hips forwards, bend your knees. We're gonna lie down. And come all the way onto your back. Oh. Take your arms out into this kind of cactus shape. Just for a moment, could you swish the knees side to side? If there's any tension or any kind of residue of holding in the back, rocking it out with the hips. And then from here, come back to center, walk the feet in, hip distance apart for a bridge. I'm gonna take my palms facing the sky by my hips. Take an inhale here, exhale, curl the tailbone off the floor, lift the hips and hold. If you'd like to make this more energizing, shift the weight into the right foot and start to lift the left leg up, point the foot. You could keep it at a diagonal, or you could even take it straight up and really drive through the right heel. Three, two, remember this is just optional. One, if you lifted the left leg, lower it down, shift into the left foot, and maybe right leg comes up, either at a diagonal or straight up. And drive through the left heel for three, two, one, lower the foot, give the glutes one last little squeeze, and then lower all the way down. Just take a moment, stretch out your legs, give yourself a little wiggle side to side. It's coming into a short Shavasana it's for half a minute to a minute, just a mini one. Mini Shavasana still works. <laughs> Deep breath in and together breath out. <sighs> so just sensing the muscles of the face releasing, the jaw ungripping, and the whole body relaxing downwards. sense of Shavasana almost resetting even just for a few moments. And begin to deepen your breath again and wiggle the fingers and the toes and let's take a big stretch out together. <sighs> So walk your feet in and you might roll to one side or maybe simply rocking up. 
and let's close sitting. So closing in a way which feels good to you, either with the palms resting on the legs or maybe the hands at the heart gently. Just allowing your head to bow a little bit. And sensing in, how do you feel right now? What's the impact of practice for you? And just sensing if it leaves you feeling good in some way that practice is always here when you need it. Bowing to that. So thanks so much for joining. It's a pleasure as always. Leave me feedbacks below. I would love to hear from you. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy your practice.